remain standing. Thank you for your patience. You will not be standing much longer. Amen. I know you had a hand clapping, foot stomping good time, and your hands are probably clapped out and your feet are probably stomped out. But just for a few more moments, wherever you are all over this building, join me in Ephesians chapter number 5. And then we're going to quickly turn to the book of Esther in the same chapter, number 5. But Ephesians chapter number 5, beginning at verse number 22. The New International Version of God's Word reads, Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. And to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it just as Christ does the church. Flip over to the book of Esther. The book of Esther. The book of Esther. Right before the book of Job. Ezra. Nehemiah and Esther. Esther chapter number five. Esther number five. And beginning at verse number two. When he saw Queen Esther standing in the court, he was pleased with her and held out to her the gold scepter that was in his hand. So Esther approached and touched the tip of the scepter. Then the king asked, What is it, Queen Esther? What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom, it will be given unto you. As you take your seat, look at your neighbor to the left and right and tell them part two. Mm, part two. Part two. We have been in, for the sake of our visitors, a series of teaching for the past few weeks entitled The Rise and the Fall of the Family. And we have looked at different aspects of the family. We've looked at biblically what the Word of God has had to say about it. And then in the last couple of weeks specifically, we've been dealing with the subject of marriage. We began a couple of weeks ago looking at Genesis chapter 2 and looking at the perfect marriage, the first marriage when God brought Adam and Eve together and and, and really looking at God's blueprint for marriage, there are some, some very specific and particular things that you have to understand about marriage that come directly from the first marriage. And we started off also by looking at the fact that when God brought Adam and Eve together, there were some particular needs that both Adam and Eve had that only God could meet. But then on last week, we went a little bit further and began looking at his needs and her needs and last week we dealt specifically with with really only her needs from Ephesians chapter 5 and and it's significant because the reality is the divorce rate of families is astounding and largely it's because so many people get married for uh, the warm and fuzzies and and he likes me and she likes him and all those kinds of things but we get married without the preparation or without the knowledge or without being really equipped to handle when the marriage needs maintenance. And one of the biggest reasons that marriages need maintenance is because there are some specific needs that the woman has that are different from the needs that a man has. And so we began to really look at biblically what are those needs. And so last week we looked at, we looked at her needs from Ephesians chapter 5. And so Today we're doing part two. We're going to get to his needs from Esther chapter five. And, and, and man, all the men in the house make some noise. Give God a praise, man. Okay. Uh, men, I need you to speak up because the ladies might not say anything today. Now, now last week, I mean, last week, the ladies were just all over the place. I got emails, text messages. People were hitting me up on Facebook and Twitter. Oh, you preach, past. Oh. Now, I wonder if they're going to say the same thing today. Because we're getting ready to deal with his needs. Touch a neighbor and tell him the man's got some needs, too. 
when, 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 when you look at the book of Esther, there, there are some things you've got to understand about Esther. Number one, you, you, number one in the very beginning, you've got to understand that Esther was a woman of tremendous strength and beauty. You've got to understand that the background of Esther is so unique because Esther's mother and father uh, died uh, when she was a small child. She became an orphan and she ultimately was adopted and raised by her cousin, a gentleman by the name of Mordecai. And the story of Esther, Esther is one of those, those lesser known books. You don't really s spend a lot of time in Esther. It's a very short book and we spend a lot of time in a number of different books. And Esther is one of those small inconsequential books that we often gloss over and rarely deal with. But it's a significant book. Because the story of Esther takes place shortly after the children of Israel have been exiled from Babylonian captivity. And after their release, many of the Israelites went back to Jerusalem, they went back to the Holy Land, and they began uh, to really build it. They went back to the Holy City, and they began to rebuild Jerusalem. This is what Ezra is about. This is what the book of Nehemiah is about. But while many of the Israelites, after they were exiled, left uh, that land of exile and went back to Jerusalem and began to rebuild the Holy City, while many Israelites did that, there's some Israelites that decided to stay. And Esther, the background of Esther, the story of Esther, really revolves around those Israelites that decided to stay behind and live the rest of their life in their land of exile. And what's so significant about Esther is that, that Esther was not in Jerusalem. She was not in the holy city, but despite the fact that she was not in that place, despite the fact that she lived the rest of her life in an exiled place, God's hand of favor was still upon her. See, many of us believe that, that you've got to have the right circumstances, you've got to be in the right environment, that all of the T's have to be crossed and all the I's have got to be dotted and everything has got to be the way it's supposed to be in order for things to work out the way you want them to work out. But touch your neighbor and tell them, I make the place, the place doesn't make me. In other words, it's not so much about the place. Some of you right now are, are praying, God, would you change the place? Would you shift me to another place? But what you really ought to be praying for is, God, just allow your hand of favor to rest upon me. Because if God's hand of favor is on you, it doesn't matter where you are. You can be in the midst of a messed up situation. But if God's hand of favor is on you, you will turn that into the greatest thing you've ever been in in your life. And, and so, and so, God's hand of favor was upon Esther. God used Esther in a way that is, that is unprecedented. God literally used Esther to change the course of human history. And he did it and used Esther because she had a submissive spirit. The previous queen, Queen, queen Vashti, was, was asked by the king. The king has this big banquet. He has all of these uh, important people. And he asked uh, the previous queen, his former wife, Queen Vashti, to present herself at the banquet to display her beauty. But, but she decides, she just says, I don't want to do it. She decides to not do it. And so subsequently, what happens is she is removed from the place of being the queen. And then the king begins this search. He rounds up all of the beautiful young ladies in the kingdom and he begins this search for the new queen, the new successor the, re the replacement if you will for, for Vashti and Esther was in this group Esther was in this group that was rounded up she was in this group and this group was to be groomed by uh, the, the eunuch that was in charge of the king's harem, this group was to be groomed for one year and then out of that, that group the king is going to choose one individual that's going to be the new queen and so when, when it was their time, because all of the individuals in this group had one night with the king, they all had one opportunity to, to have a moment with the king, to have time with the king. And when it was their time to go before the king, these, these young ladies, these virgins, they, they were allowed to take anything that they wanted in to please the king. Some took uh, musical instruments, some took animals and a number of different things. But Esther didn't take any of that. Esther only took what the eunuch told her to take. Now, the Bible does not tell us what she took. But because 